Hello everyone, I am Akshay Gorke. Uh, I am software engineer at Red Hat, working for Red Hat Insights. And uh, here is my first talk in the DevCom. So this is the first time I am presenting in front of uh, such huge people. So yeah, uh, I am starting with uh, whatever I have and try to explain <coughs> as much as easily to you that can add up. So this is about the exploratory data analysis. Uh, those are techniques that we follow usually in the data analysis part. So there are lots of things like uh, today's world, <coughs> it's a AI and machine learning thing. Everything is, uh, everyone is just wanted to have an you know magic, like nowadays uh, generative language models like chat GPTs and uh, the bar and all. Like you know they are just uh, huge, huge uh, popular. So, but everything is uh, started with the, you know, the data, the data collection and then processing and then, you know, tra uh, training to the models and all the things. This is the journey, whole journey. And uh, I'm just, you know, uh, explaining the few, uh, one part of the journey related to data. Because if you want the output, it should need, a, you know, <coughs> a data. That is the input for our uh, the journey. So, uh, in that, uh, we will explain how we can, you know, process that data, how we easily uh, the data should be uh, managed and process the model so that they can adopt it and uh, quickly perform the operations they wanted to do. So, yeah, moving ahead with that, uh, here is the agenda for today's session. So, we will first introduce about the EDA, then the, how, what differs EDA and data analysis. And there are the techniques that the data cleaning, the visualization, there are some libraries. So I'm mostly speaking up with the, you know, uh, correlated with the Python language that is the most popular language in data science as well. And then <coughs> decision making and the business strategies on that and then we'll open for the few and sessions. So yeah, so moving ahead with that. If, is there any questions? So please uh, ask in time. So, <clears throat> this is the simple one, uh, the path, the raw data, the between exploratory data analysis and the output. So, uh, it is the, no, the exploratory data analysis, before that we will understand the raw data. Raw data is multiple types, the text, images, anything like that. In the text we can, I mean, like suppose we are looking into the large models, language models using the data in form of, you know, reading, understanding the knowledge books, uh, journals, articles and all this. So raw data is in multiple types of form. It's, we can collect mostly, mostly we try to uh, gather in the CSV files, uh, the text files and then upon, uh, uh, from that collect the, the whatever the needed data, I mean in a clean way. Whenever the data is generated, it's not in that clean way that can models can uh, adopt it. So that the raw, raw data, the collection of the process, I think nowadays the huge data is uh, generating because we are all using internet and uh, for every click, thousands of uh, lines of data is uh, generating and it's the data. There is no limitations for data in today's world but looking into past few years like uh, maybe 15 20 years back so collecting a data is a big challenge that time but not today so now we have a huge data but now going ahead with the data analysis so the data is in unstructured way because we need to a data in a perfect format so that we can get some, you know, uh, understand patterns from it, uh, get the analysis, get the, uh, we can improve our decision making system, try to do that. So that needs a data analysis thing. And uh, in the exploratory data analysis, uh, you know, it's a somehow critical process that basically uh, performing the initial, initial investigation of the data that discover patterns, uh, anomalies, then hypothesis and to check the assumptions as well. It is, I mean the first good, it is a good practice to understand the data first and then 
gather the insights from it as much as possible. It is the approach to extract information from unfolded data to summarize the main characteristics of the data. Because some, I, I mean, in the many times it happens that most of the people underestimate the importance of data preparation and the data exploration. It is the important step because if we, if we have well-defined structured data, the projects uh, that are using the data to manage, to learn their, train their models, it will be easy. And with the very minimal time, the output will be there. So, and as we know, the, the output will be the, you know, in, in, in the case of exploratory data analysis, the output is the data analysis. We, have, we will extract the patterns in different way. We will provide a clean data and uh, the enriched data that means it's all cleaned and uh, statistically input. So, uh, I have the next slide here. It's like, because it's EDA and the data analysis, so how much, it, how it can differ? Uh, exploratory data analysis and data analysis kind of you know confusing thing to everyone but uh, I think this table will help so basically the future is uh, the goal of the data analysis uh, is answer questions make predictions gain better understanding on that that is but in EDA it's just to you know gain insights from the meaning of the data and you know the data collect such information pattern from the data. Nothing about the model training and all. Nothing, nothing about the much more about the machine learning. All the things. The time, the future time is uh, the EDA is uh, early in the data science process. As I said, the initial process uh, in that, and uh, after that the data analysis. So we can say that EDA is a part of data analysis. It's a, the data analysis is a huge big tree and it is a one part of the EDA, it's a one part of that. Uh, looking into the formality feature, so EDA is less formal and data analysis is more formal because as I said data analysis is a you know, big, uh, big part and the EDA is a small part, small part of that. The methods are the same, um, I mean the all the methods using in the EDA as a, already in the data analysis, but in EDA specifically, I mentioned that the visualization, uh, the visualization is basically too much focus in the in this because many times it happens that there is no need of you know going ahead with the machine learning things to do some stuffs. We can get it from you know just analyzing the data itself there, and uh, the visualization will solve our problems. So visualization is most important because there are uh, going ahead. We'll explain about the what are the types of the visualization as well. But uh, this is the important step, and you know, as a human tendency, everyone knows that uh, our mind captures the visualization first. Uh, anything later than the uh, reading or hearing or something like that. But this is the important, and this solves here most of the part. And then. <coughs> Uh, in the data analysis part, it's the statistics, modeling, machine learning, uh, then all the stuff, so model training, testing, and then gathering, then again providing the output to, you know, check up, test our data on that and getting output. Uh, and then still, if, if it is gathered, we need also need to put efforts to get, uh, just, you know, it's uh, getting calculated its accuracy and all the things, how much it is accurately uh, performed there. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, this is the all thing differentiates uh, the both the data analysis and EDA. Is there any question till now? Yeah. yeah. So going ahead. Uh, so first we'll explain the data cleaning uh, cleaning techniques. So there are several techniques, but uh, uh, today I'm just wanted to show uh, highlight few of the techniques that are. Uh, miss many times, but are, that are quite important in that stage. So the first one is the handling missing data. So I'll just give an example. Like we have a bunch of uh, data in this collected in the C, uh, uh, the spreadsheet file, CSV file, and uh, some in content that suppose there is a some data is missing in the particular column and row. 
but when we analyze that it it it, uh, it will uh, about us to you know getting a expected accuracy in that area so to how we can handle this so we can first do that it's you know, the first step is to identify the missing values so those will be identified in python there is a functions like is null or is na to identify the missing values in data so in that way if you process about like in like we are using the pandas uh, library in the library uh, python library and it is a popular library used in the eda technology as well and uh, we will just create the data frame there and data frame we will run against we will check that is it uh, is there any missing values in the particular column and row using, using these functions then there is <coughs> next stage like we found missing data in that so we can either delete the particular row or we can either fill the value in that so that anyway if suppose we wanted to delete so the simplest method we can use the drop any functions and it will simply delete all the rows and columns contains the missing data so it's that simple in python and uh, the next one is the imputation this involves the you know replacing the missing data like as i said if there is a few columns and the uh, rows having the missing data so we can you know uh, we can fill that data with uh, mean sometimes median uh, standard deviation anything like that but it's all about the data we are working with so these things we can do as well and the modeling as well uh, helps us to handle the missing data uh, create the mod there, there will be models uh, that helps to uh, handle the missing data very well so no need to go into the that much uh, raw things the next thing is dealing the outliners so first uh, the step in that part is to identify the outliners to identify the outliners uh, i mean it is very much important very much important thing because we have a data of age suppose we are wanted to process data in some age group of uh, suppose 10 to 20 uh, for the people we are analyzing data in that and suppose there is a data of age of 60 and 70 so these are the outliners because when we are processing on only those uh, part but the there are some data that are not correlated with the the what are our expectations so that is also important to gather because when we are trying to get a mean of that data suppose we have a problem needs to perform operations on 10 to 20 age group people and uh, we just suppose get a mean of that so it's in, in close to that but if any number is 60 or 70 in that age group that will uh, break that accuracy uh, in very short time in that Wait. So identify outliers. The methods like Z score and visualize data using the box plots or scatter plots. I mean the scatter plot is very much popular in that way. So we just see that yeah these these data are outline uh, outside that our predicted curve. <coughs> Sorry. Then evaluating those uh, outliners. So. Uh, once we have identified the outliners to evaluation determine with the valid data points so sometimes there may be error while generating the data while collecting the data as well we can check in that way or uh, the same either we remove that or uh, we'll just figure out that why the data is you know, wrong in that case so that was also one thing the same uh, mention the inputted outliner as well the it will remove from the data set or uh, leave a gap in the data so can be filled with the missing uh, missing value and one more thing we can deal with outlier we can transform the data so the we can either fully transform that uh, num uh, the data with the whatever the average or the correlated data we are expecting in that situation so that's what about the dealing the outliners moving ahead we have a uh, few more techniques on the data cleaning the next one is the data standardization and normalization 
So, the standardization in that uh, is this technique uh, to normalize the data in the standard format. Like uh, we use mostly in the standard deviation in that, like uh, or mean, median, like those things. Uh, because we need a data in a particular range in that situation. So in that, the standardization, data standardization is very much important. Like uh, there is a, a data um, of uh, either true or false data will be there. So it should be in a standard format. It's either true or false, not more than that. I mean, nothing else from that. The so we can check that and with the help of uh, some of the uh, tools like scikit-learn provide the uh, standard, standard scalar can simplify this process. <coughs> so scikit-learn is also very much popular in the machine learning library and it helps to data cleaning, data pre-processing part uh, that the standardization will do. The next one is the normalization. So this is also a technique that will work like a min max uh, approach in a specific range uh, like suppose there is a data of a huge number uh, starting from zero to millions of numbers there but it's not possible to work on few of the numbers that are out of our range we can read so we, in that case we just normalize in the scale of you know zero to one or either we can it's up to us uh, in which where we want to uh, normalize in the specific range. In that way, uh, the data will be easily readable and uh, it's human readable and uh, uh, easy to because there is it will not change anything in the in the processing of the model. It just we are changing the range of the data and uh, there is a, a min max scalar uh, tools in the scikit learn that. <coughs> Uh, that helps to uh, normalize the data. In mathematically, uh, we can. In mathematically, uh, we'll say that if uh, there is a data of large scale, uh, uh, like we'll go that a point. Uh, suppose there is a decimal points number as well, and uh, fractions number. But it's quite. Uh, I mean, it's hard to work with that those number to normalize it with the scale. So basically 0 to 1 scale is very much popular uh, in the data analysis thing and uh, because it's mathematically there is, a, there is also few uh, theorems that can uh, show that 0 to 1 uh, normalization is basically uh, very much helpful and uh, quite good uh, to process with uh, whatever our data analysis thing going on. So that's the thing about the data standardization and normalization. The next one is the handling duplicate data. So we, as a, as far as we see the handling, uh, the missing data, the handling outliners and the data standardized normalization. But there is one more thing, the handling duplicate data as well. So while collection data, multiple entries will be duplicated. We, we, if we have few checks there while collection, it's okay, but uh, the data should be, uh, I mean, you know, the duplicate data will will not be that much uh, helpful to improve the accuracy and get the output from that. So how we can handle that? So it's uh, so these are the all the steps we need to perform while the cleaning the data and while duplicate uh, handling the duplicate data. We'll check that uh, the, all the duplicate records with the function duplicated uh, against the pandas data frame. So all the duplicated <coughs> data will be identified there, and uh, we can just. I think it's a standardized process to remove that duplicate data. There is nothing we can do with that, like doing standardization or normalization with that, because it's a duplicate data. We need to remove that. Uh, to get it things done and the removing of the duplicate data is also a simple uh, with the drop duplicates function uh, in the, uh, the the function of the pandas library uh, against we can run against the data frame so it will it is that simple to remove that all the variables 
So this is I'm specifically talking about the Python thing. There are lots of other tools we can uh, manage. I mean, we can do those uh, things. Uh, there are too many softwares as well that help to data cleaning. The models are creating. The models are helping in that way. But going with the basic, if we understand how it's basically it's working the in the scratch. So the next things will definitely be able to uh, understand all the things. So this is the uh, four. Uh, four, four techniques I think that is much more the basic one but which is important to in the data cleaning process there are few more uh, data cleaning techniques like uh, these are the, the data uh, maintain data integrity uh, and get, uh, encoding categorical variables data integration then cleaning also the, the document documenting the data cleaning steps is also one more important thing I, I would say that what we are doing is also no. Every time, in general way, we are trying to document what we what we are doing. So the the words and next will come there. Try to you know uh, adopt those things very quickly, and uh, so that's the important step when we uh, perform the steps uh, on the data set. So the, <coughs> to document it, it's a good one, a good step, and uh, uh, the iterate the data cleaning live in the various. These steps we need to iterate multiple times as well. Uh, it it need not be you no know, uh, sure that we will get data uh, in that uh, uh, clean way. So we need to perform various types of uh, techniques on that uh, with the under, with all of the understanding. So moving ahead, I I, I would uh, like to show the data visualization techniques. And I also uh, expl I uh, express the few of that will be you know uh, important in that uh, step and very easy to understand as well. The first one I already told about the scatter plots, and uh, the scatter plots is uh, basic mainly used for the the out detecting the outliner. So there is the there is. These are the outliners, the points. So it's, it, the the graph shows about the cost and the weights. So whenever we're talking about this, is uh, you know looks like uh, much more uh, centric. And the, if we draw a line from here, it much more be linear and it's uh, adjacent to that. So it, there is not uh, looks like it is not a uh, outliners or anything that. So we can easily understand that the data will be good to go and. Uh, linear models we can use in uh, in such type of data to get the you know output from the linear. Uh, suppose we are using the <coughs> regression techniques, then linear regression. Which which regression technique we want to use uh, is uh, it will uh, it will be helpful. So the it is the widely used to relationship between continuous variables. The two variables uh, continuous variables, linearly data we can collect. If there is any variable is here. So I mean, it is the outliner, and we need to perform the data cleaning techniques, uh, the outliner techniques over that. The next one is the bar charts. So I know everyone is used the bar charts. Uh, I mean, many times in the Excel sheets or spreadsheet, we are using bar charts to just do the thing. So I just uh, created a, a child, children data here uh, that represents you know uh, the children and their preschool, primary school, secondary school. Too. Those those are the color that how much uh, the you know uh, the school childrens will be will be uh, uh, using that and all the uh, in that category. So it will I mean this is too much simple to no need to explain much more on that. So is that the magic of visualization? I don't need to explain much of this. Uh, going ahead with the histogram. Uh, so it's a it's a graphical representation is a distribution of continuous variables so uh, uh, there is a data bin data is uh, you know distributed in the bins and uh, display the frequency or uh, count of values falling within, within the each bins and uh, this helps to actually uh, shape central tendency spread the data and uh, useful for uh, identifying the data skewness and uh, as well as the identifiers as well. Uh, so histogram is also most popular one in the visualization technique, and it's so very, uh, very much helpful in that. 
uh, going ahead uh, and also um, explaining few of the data techniques here. Uh, there are lots of visualization technique nowadays. I mean, if you are using your tools like uh, Tableau and Power BI and all these things, so it's very easy to do that. But in, uh, but we need to know about it, which techniques we have and uh, how for for which data, which one uh, suits well. So uh, the line plots. The first one is the line plots, and uh, it 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 helps to visualize the trends over uh, over the time and the continuous uh, sequence. <coughs> so this is about the uh, time sensitive uh, data we can uh, plot in the plot using the line plot. The next one is the box plot. The box plot uh, data, so I, I will not put the data here, so we'll just explain. In, uh, explain. So it will provide the summary of the distribution of the data, and uh, it displays the minimum first. It displays the minimum first quantile, mean, median, like the third quantile, uh, the maximum value, minimum value. Uh, if there is any outliers, like that. So the these box plots will help to spread skewness, central tendency, and present the outliers of the data. <coughs> then the heat maps. So the knows that heat maps also popular like the for example I'm giving the weather data will we can visualize using the heat map with the different different colors with different different color color shades on that. The, so this is the color coding visualization. Heat map is a color coding visualization with the intensity and the magnitude of variable at across the multiple categories of and the dimensions. So heat map uh, effective for showing correlations, patterns, and clustering the large data set. They are commonly used for analyzing data matrix for multivariate data. So there is the types of data: multivariate, univariate, bivariate. So univariate is simple data, and multivariate contains the multiple types of data. So these types of data will be uh, easily visualized using the heat maps. Going ahead with the pie charts, uh, so pie charts also. Pie charts, uh, everyone also knows about the pie charts. Uh, the proportion or the percentage of the different categories within the data set, we can show with that. It will visualize the composition, the whole uh, relative sizes of the different different categories will be visualized using the pie charts in, on that, and. Uh, but it is only numbering, uh, it is limited with only numbering on that. Then the geographical maps, uh, as its name said, the geographical data, we can visualize, uh, it will show the distributions across the regions, locations, uh, I mean any city wise, country wise, uh, we will able to show the pattern from that, uh, specific to any particular data we are working with that, like the population. Uh, like uh, you know, any other things uh, we can highlight with the geographical maps. Uh, then there is a <coughs> interactive visualizations. So, like as I said, uh, the tools like Power BI, Tableau. Uh, there is a library uh, plot lie, matplotlib. Uh, matplotlib is a simple one, but the plot lie is the providing the interactive visualization. So that uh, uh, the, the next level of all these techniques will give the much more detailed, detailed data, uh, color, detailed data representation from the uh, data provided in that area. <coughs> so all these uh, data analysis techniques uh, facilitate the better understanding of the data set, and uh, the visualization is the most important thing. As I said, it solves many problems in, in that area. Going ahead with the libraries, uh, mostly used in the EDA. So Pandas is the um, first and more, foremost the most popular one. Uh, the data multiple from the multiple sources we collect the data in Pandas and Pandas store it as in the data frame, and uh, it is easily easy to process with the rich function set of the Pandas library. So that will help to. 
uh, process the data like cleaning cleaning thing we'll do with that and much more thing with this because uh, it is it has a data frames and series uh, and this is used mainly in the processing pre-processing part and the initial data investigation in the EDA, uh, EDA process the numpy is a, a mathematical uh, computation related uh, library in the python it provides the data structure mathematical functions and operations on the uh, we can perform it with the arrays, matrix, and the pandas data frames in the way. Matplotlib is the visualization library in Python. It's a popular one, one of the most popular one. And uh, uh, it it has a variety of basic basic plot, basic plots like line plots, scatter plots, bar plots, histogram, and uh, and many more. So. Visualizing data distribution relationship and pattern during EDA, it will be easy with the Matplotlib library. The, there is a Seaborn one. Uh, the, this is the high level data visualization library. Uh, yeah, so th those are the library. Then Plotla is also the interactive one, and the Scikit-learn is the machine learning, and uh, uh, the library will help to pre process the data as well. These are the few decision making and business strategy to identify the data driven opportunities, validate. Uh, those are the things. So we have time, there is time, so we'll just go on a QA session. So I'll just read those the decision making and business strategy we can gather from the EDA. It's uh, validate assumptions, then mitigate risk, optimize resource allocations, uh, then improve customer understanding. Enhance product development, optimize operation and process, and monitor key performance. So we can have all these things uh, collectively from all the EDA process. So yeah, uh, going uh, with the Q and session. Is there any question? Anyone else? Any questions? Anyone? No questions. No questions online as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much.